Hello universe. Welcome to my world. We're still doing Angelina Jordan. We'll reach her at the end of the video. Today we're revisiting the famous Amy Winehouse song, You Know I'm No Good. This was off of her Back to Black album. It doesn't quite have the high profile of Rehab or Back to Black, but it's an excellent song and it's been covered by many, many different artists. I learned something very interesting today. Normally when I do one of the videos where I do one song in different genres, I identify the genre. I said, well, this one is jazz and this one is jazz funk, or this is folk, or this is folk rock. But I found I cannot do this today because the subtleties of the different genres really almost defy classification. And so what I'm going to do, instead of trying to put them into categories, I'm going to describe them in a way which defines them more than just putting them into a category. I'm certainly not going to say this is 60% jazz and 40% blues or 70% soul and 30% jazz. I'm not going to do that for sure. But here we go. First, we will go to the continent. We will hear two versions. The first one is from a Polish singer by the name of Monica Borzim. This cover of the Amy Winehouse classic came from her first album. And then we are going to Spain to hear Lucia for the first cover by Monica Borzim. It is very, very slow and it features an accordion. I really like the accordion. I think it should be more prominent and more common in modern music. There are very, very few examples. A couple that I remember from 50 years ago, one was where Do You Go To My Lovely by Peter Sarsak. Do you remember that one with the accordion? You talk like Molly and, you dream. and there's another accordion in one of the Rolling Stone songs, Backstreet Girl. Do you remember this song? Don't try to ride on my horse you're rather common, of course, anyway. Let's hear the two continental versions now. First, Monica Borzim from Poland, and then when we hear Lucia, she does an excellent tender version. Meet you downstairs in the bar and heard your old obsolete in your school t-shirt you say what did you do with him today and sniffed me out like I was tankeray cause you're my fellow my god and me you still and fly by the time I'm out the door you turn me down like road to more I cheated myself like I knew I would the next two versions we hear are opposite ends of the spectrum the first one I cannot say it's a folk version only because it's a guitar, but it's a simple version and it's very direct and accessible. The follow-up version, it's definitely a big band, but it's also very flamboyant. First, we will be hearing from Ruby Kosamar, who's Canadian, and then we will be hearing from Remember Jones, and he is originally from New Jersey, which is the home of Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel. Let's hear extreme contrast from these two versions. Meet you downstairs in the bar and heard You rolled up sleeves and your skull t-shirt He said, what did you do with him today? And sniffed me out like I was tank away Cause you're my fellow, my guy me your Stella and fly by the time I'm out the door. You tear me down like Roger Moore. Meet 
Next, we're going to California, and we're visiting someone who is Angelina's generation. Um, Chavaya is her name, and she is only five years older than Angelina. She's very well known, and she does a version which is unusual. It's almost like she could be singing salsa. It's the pronunciation of some of the words which gives it an extra spice. I'm impressed with this version. I, I rate this version. Made you The next version is the one I had the most trouble even beginning to try and categorize or classify. Tom Grennan is also a Londoner, as was Amy Winehouse. And this is just a very, very good, very unusual version. It captures some of the Amy Winehouse original, but he takes it in a different direction. Listen to this. Meet you downstairs at the bar, eh, huh? her rolled up jeans. And a scotty show. She said, Why do you do it him today? You spin me out like I was tankeray. You are my fella, my guy. Help me, my stella, and fly. And by the time I'm out the door. The next version we will hear is from Katrina Marie. She is a Boston singer, songwriter, and her version is very similar to the original Amy Winehouse version. And with the possible exception of Angelina Jordan, this is probably the closest one we will hear to the original Amy Winehouse. What I really like about this version is halfway through this clip, she changes her tone when she sings You Are My Guy her voice becomes very much more tender and soft. I like that change in the vocals very intentionally to fit in with the lyrics. Meet you downstairs in the bar and hurt Your rolled up sleeves in your skull t-shirt You said, what did you do with him today? And sniff me out like I was taken I was very impressed with your performance. And oh, thank you. are you a professional musician or do you have another job? Well, both. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I am a professional musician. Um, so that video was um, probably several years ago now. Yeah. Um, so I had just moved to Boston and I was just kind of getting started and working on my first album um, and, and getting out there. I hadn't really performed that much at that time. Um, but since then, I've, I've had a band for years and I've been performing all over the East Coast and um, yeah, so I'm definitely, I would, I would characterize myself as a professional. However, you don't make a ton of money most of the time uh, gigging. So I, I always have had a, another job during the day. Yeah, okay. Um, as we say, don't give up the day job. No. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a day job that I absolutely love too. So well, you're lucky. Meet you downstairs in the bar and hurt your rolled up sleeves in your 
scarf t-shirt You said what did you do with him today And sniff me out like I was Ted Gray I'm just smiling already because I'm, I'm watching the guys behind me, like, they're, like, giggling and smiling and kind of talking to each other while they're playing. And it's reminding me how impromptu that, that whole thing was. We were just, so those guys were guys that I had just met recently, and we were working on an album together. Um, and so one night we were like, we should go out and, and play. Like, it'll be fun. And one, one of the guys was like, yeah, my friend's doing an open mic night. Uh, downtown we should go and um, so we just randomly I don't even think we rehearsed at all and, and just played so that was the first time any of us had ever performed together was on that video and um, so while we were performing we were all kind of hearing each other for the first time wow <laughs> I mean we had, we had kind of heard each other in recording sessions and and writing sessions and stuff but we'd never performed before so you can just see us all just like being silly and just realizing, oh, you do that really well. Or like, oh, that's really cool what you just threw in there. Yeah, it was just a, it was a fun time. Because the band seemed so professional and you seemed so professional. You really surprised me because you really all seemed very polished. That's awesome that, that it came across that way. I think we had all been doing uh, our own professional things individually and we uh. had gotten fairly good at impromptu stuff as individuals. And I think we just kind of got together and, and tried to do the best we could. It just it seemed like a good match, I guess. <laughs> Does it have something to do with the nature of jazz? Because um, your version is sort of jazzy and jazzy by almost definition is a bit improvisational. Is that why it probably was pretty seamless? Yeah, I, I think that probably had a lot to do with it. Um, this, this style kind of lended itself to a little bit of exploration and just kind of having fun with it. Um, and I think we all just loved the song, so that came across as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you obviously were very, very familiar with the song because the way you captured the mood and the in inflection, it's really obvious to me that um, your version is very similar to Amy Winehouse, but in a really good way. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, so I had, I had been listening to her record for a while, um, Back to Black, and I just thought it was the coolest collaboration um, with Mark Ronson. Uh, I had always loved the kind of um, music with kind of like a 60s vibe to it. Um, really just like 50s, 60s was kind of just always my, my style that I loved, um, even before I, I had heard Amy. And I heard this record and it just sounded like such a great throwback with all those instruments that I just love so much. Um, and it, I just, I was singing it all the time, yeah. um, just walking down the street. So I, I knew it well and I just felt it too. I, I just, I, I could feel that um, just, I don't know, there's, there's just so much feeling in that song. Um, from the vocals and from from yeah. the music behind it, and I just could feel it. And um, yeah, it was just it felt it, it came easy. It was just She's one of the thing is when you listen to her, it's really really hard to imagine that any improvement can be done from any version because her versions are so in your face and raw, and she's so improvisational, and you know it, it, she puts so much spin on her performance. Her performance is so original. And it, it's very, very difficult to, to duplicate what she does. But you are very, very much in her direction in terms of feeling it and how it comes across. That's one of the reasons I reached out for you, because I really admired your performance. Thank you. Um, I, think, I think that's one of the things I love the most about her as well is, is her rawness. Yeah. Um, I love listening to, to singers who are, are just organic and raw it's my favorite kind of music to listen to <laughs> okay uh, and uh yeah I, I i don't know what i was trying to do with that performance i think i think there's uh, so now in in my band i i sing a lot of originals but i also sing cover music as well um it's fun for us but also fun for for people to listen to when they when they come see us it's always like fun to hear a song that you know and um I think that the toughest part for me about singing cover songs is 
you want to be yourself. You don't want to sing an exact copy of, of what the what the original artist did. But at the same time, you want to you still want to bring that vibe out to the audience because that's what they fell in love with in the first place with that song. Yeah. So it's kind of a I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing. I feel like I get a 50 50 mix on in the comments section with that. Some people. <laughs> Some people love that I sounded like her that night. They just are just infatuated with it. And then other people are like, oh, man, you're trying to copy her. Why are you copying? <laughs> Don't sound like her. You know, it's, it's pretty much a 50-50. I can see why and how it would be double-edged to do a cover. Yeah. You, you either have to be very, very creative or you have to have a completely different spin or th there has to be some type of phenomenal situation to actually improve the cover, especially because the covers are so deeply embedded in people's conscience. You know, the, this is the, the standard of what they're used to. Right, right. Yeah. But let's carry on listening, okay? Okay. Cause you're my fella, my guy. Can be a stella and fly. By the time I'm out of the door, you tear me down like Roger Moore. I treat him myself like I knew. I just I love singing her songs. I her, I love her lyrics so much. I just I love the lyrics to her songs, all of them. Like I just love how she has a way of really being descriptive, but also being subtle <laughs> with what she's saying. Like she really comes out and exactly what she means, but you you can get the gist of it. And I love that. I love it. You you have to think about it a little bit. And um, I just I just love singing her lyrics. It's just fun. Yeah. Also, something I'm noticing is my my voice was a lot of people comment on how raspy my voice was that night. And um, I'm just remembering why. Uh, this was so impromptu and I remember, so I was trying to meet the guys in Boston somewhere at this, at this open mic night. And I had been really sick, like the night before, I just a, a cough, a bad cough, but always in our business, the show must go on. So I, I pop a cough drop and keep going. And so I was by myself with my guitar on my back and I'm like walking through Boston. I had no idea where I was and I got lost and I found myself like in an alley and I was just like terrified. And I started crying and I picked up my phone and I called one of the guys and I said, where is this place? And um, they came out and got me and, and I showed up late and I felt terrible. I don't like being late. So I remember going into the bathroom, I wiped my tears and I took a shot of whiskey from my flask. <laughs> <laughs> I went up and sang and so I do have a little bit of a, a raspy voice but that night it was being sick crying and whiskey so that well, the, <laughs> the raspiness is very much in an Amy Winehouse tradition and there, and dare I say the whiskey is very much in the Amy Winehouse tradition I suppose that's true. <laughs> but you know, the, 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 the raspiness just gives it that edge. And, and that's why your performance is so good be, because that, that raspiness really, really captures it. It does, yeah, it does. Let, let's keep going. In my buds and bows, but I to meet you, it's years of Peter. You say when we marry, cause you're not Peter. No more, I cry for you on the kitchen floor. I cheated myself like I knew I would. I told you I knew it was trouble. Yeah, you know that I'm no good. Sweet reunion, Jamaica and Spain. We're like how. Your lips as 
soak my feet And then you notice little carpet burns My stomach drops and my guts turn You shrug and it's the one Who truly stuck the knife in face I treated myself like I knew You are enjoying your performance immensely. Oh my gosh, it just makes me happy. I love that song so much and I, I still perform it today. It just always makes me happy listening to it. Um, I can't listen to that last note though. It's so bad. So at the, at the very end, we had never practiced how to, how to end the song. And I was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna like sing a whole note, like way higher than anything that we've been doing this whole night. And uh, the guys had no idea. So it was just like totally off. I told you I always trouble. Yeah, you know. Your reactions visually are like one of the features of this video. You're such a great audience for yourself. <laughs> that's, that's, great. that's great. Now we're going to 2007 to hear Amy Winehouse sing her original. There's some real advantage of being the original singer-songwriter because you integrate the lyrics and the music and the feeling, the Leonard Cohns of the world and the Bob Dylans and the Adele's. They have a natural advantage because of how they integrate the music and the lyrics together. And this is certainly true with Amy. Whatever personal problems she might have had and even her intoxication while performing actually did not interfere with the quality. She was able to go on automatic pilot and just produce a really, really good performance time after time after time. With Amy Winehouse generally, her versions are raw and they're direct and they're untamed. She's very recognizable and very much in your face and you can see why she is such a total legend. If we do hear the, um, the Amy Winehouse, do you want to talk me through that? Or I mean, because it, what would be really, really interesting is someone like yourself, not only a professional musician, but a professional jazz musician, your ears and your musicianship will hear things with Amy that ordinary people will not hear. Perhaps. <laughs> okay. So let's hear Amy's version, and then you can stop me and talk me through it, or, or tell me how you reinterpreted a particular moment. Yeah? Okay. Okay, go. Meet you downstairs in a your rolled up sleeves, and your skull t-shirt. You said, why did you do with him today? He'll snuff me out like I was tempered. You love her band. <laughs> She's great. Um, I love how they uh, they played with, um, I guess, really the, the the high and low tones of the song because and and I struggle with this a lot as well. When you're a female with a deeper voice, uh -huh. um, you can get it's easy to get hidden by the music. Pretty, it's pretty easy, um, and so. Something I love that they did with this song was um, the way they played with the horns 
and they kind of like dance them around her her vocals. So they have the the the, the, the that berry sax and the bottom there, and and then they'll do the do 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 with the horns on top, kind of like they kind of sandwich around her her awesome vocals. Um, I think that's really cool, and uh, and it's also of course that that kind of '60s vibe too, which is, which is yeah yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I, what you what you just said a few minutes ago, um, Angelina Jordan also says in terms of um, they go to a performance, they do one off and they sort of improvise. Do you think that is where Amy's performance would be coming from? Or do you think that this would be very, very thoroughly rehearsed and very polished? Uh, or would it sort of be jazzy and a lot of improvisation uh, in the moment? Uh, what, like, what do I, of this particular performance? Yeah, yeah, at? yeah. Um, I mean, what that looks like to me is, is someone who put in a lot of work and, uh, ahead of time with, um, just knowing, knowing the project, knowing the assignment, yeah. but then they got out there and just did what they feel. Yeah. Um, and I think... I'm really impressed by that because you you can't just you, you can't just nobody can just get out there and completely do what they feel and and sound that amazing. This is this is I feel like with Amy it's a combination of her just practicing her craft and 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 knowing how to how to do what she does best, but then kind of getting on stage and just forgetting everything yeah. that she's ever practiced and just feeling it and. Um, you know, I, I never, I never got the opportunity to meet her and, uh, talk to her about it. That would have been amazing, but that's what it looks like to me. Just someone who... Coming up, um, she, she has, um, four words that she sings in a completely different way where she sings on the kitchen floor, but the way she sings it to me, she is not only uh, totally confident, but completely on top of her game, where she only a consummate professional will use that phrasing and that sort of tone to, to sing those just four words on the kitchen floor. It, it's, it's coming up, but it, it's really, really amazing. Yeah, let's have a listen. She's a consummate professional. There are people who just say, you know, she's like the legend. I admire the fact that you take on an Amy Winehouse song and you can do it justice. I take my hat off to you. Thank you. I always, I, it's incredible what she does. What I just, um, touching on what, what you were talking about before that clip, um, I think, I think really what that is with that, what she's doing is taking the emotions and then putting it with math. That's how I've always looked at it. And it's, you're taking essentially two different sides of your brain and trying to put them together when you're giving that kind of performance. You're, you're feeling the music and trying to convey a message emotionally but then you also have to fit it into a certain amount of time <laughs> and that's really what the struggle is wow you can't especially with jazz it's like you gotta you want to you want to get those those runs in there and those little riffs but but you only have a certain amount of time to do it um and you got to keep a certain pace so that people are following you uh, in that way as well. So you, you need people to follow the math and follow your emotions kind of at the same time 
and it's uh it's it's a really interesting form of art and i she she just did it so beautifully that's a great point i have not heard anyone describe it like that because you're you're almost describing, I have a left side of my brain and I have a right side of my brain and they have to m marry and talk to each other while I'm performing. And the way you yeah. just described it is really, really good. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. I feel like that's what's going on when I, when I try to do when I'm, when I'm giving a performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, you want to grab them with the emotions and, and you, want to, you want to evoke emotion from your audience. Um, and you know, you're not, you're far away from them. You're not touching them, but, and you're not even really having a, a back and forth conversation with them, but you have to find a way to, to make them feel something. Um, and that's the challenge. And then you gotta, you gotta put it into a certain amount of time. Yeah. So but, yeah. Follow your band at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, um, some people are born with a gift and I'm not sure how much someone can learn music unless they have, you need a, like a raw talent before you can actually learn it. it it's, it's really on, on different levels. You know, I, I don't know. I haven't, I don't think I've decided that yet. I think I, I, I've taught music in the past. Wow. And so I, I like to think that that anybody can take their special, unique feelings and emotions and talents and produce something cool. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've, I've formed an opinion on that yet. Now we've come to Angelina Jordan, finally. Uh, several things about her version of this song. First of all, I need to apologize for the acoustics. Your sound isn't that good. It sounds a little bit like she's singing in a warehouse, and I actually have taken professional advice to see if I can improve the sound, but no can do. The other thing I will say is she has changed the lyrics to make them age appropriate. She's still only 13 when she's doing this performance, which in itself is remarkable. And as a rule, with all of the Amy Winehouse lyrics, she has altered them, make them age appropriate. The other thing which is interesting is watch her hands. There are three interesting moments with her hands. One is when she goes like this with her right hand, it's almost like she's weaving a web. Another moment, she actually puts her hand on her chest, which is a way of having a heartfelt moment. It's also a moment when there's a guitar riff, and with her left hand, she's playing the guitar herself. We'll watch all of this, and Angelina Jordan has been compared to Amy Winehouse, and you can see the great similarity, even though the sound is not perfect.
another thing about this particular video is you can really see how the music takes over Angelina. It just flows through her the way electricity flows through a light bulb. And this is really how she experiences music. Another thing is, some people say, how can Angelina at the age of 13 or 14, who has had such a limited life experience, how can she sing these blues and classic where she's singing about pain and anguish? She doesn't have the life experience. It's a good point. I cannot disagree with that. But her understanding of music is a great compensation and that tends to override her relative lack of experience. And for us mere mortals who appreciate music from a distance, the way she experiences and understands music just puts her singing into a different dimension. A lot of people who will watch a YouTube song will like the song and they will like the artist, but um, it's a huge, huge music industry behind what the singer does. And it is um, pretty much a mystery, all of the complexity of everything going on behind the scene. Obviously, I, I'm doing Angelina Jordan videos, and she's recently resigned in the last six months to Republic Records. But all of the uh, strategic movements uh, going on behind the scene, most listeners know nothing, nothing about. Um, do, you ha do you have any general points of, of what it's like to try and break into the music industry? Um, I just say, well, from my perspective, I never had, I never knew anyone in the business. And um, I didn't come from money. So um, I, I think I would imagine that's a, that's a huge challenge, um, like in comparison to others that may have um, already, already known people in the business to work with and such. Um, so all that I know is grunt work, really. It's not really that pretty. It's, it's, I, you know, it's, it's really just working hard at your instruments, working hard at your at your craft. And then basically everything that I've ever done has just been very small baby steps. There, there's never been any kind of like big reveal moment of like, you know, oh, now you're gonna be famous or now you're gonna have this huge project or it's just small little baby steps um, taking on projects with people that I think are great people and, and talented people to work with um, and forming relationships with uh, good people, really. Um, and just, and, and working hard at um, pretty much everything. Like if, if you don't have the money to pay someone to, to, to do the work for you, you're literally doing everything. So I have uh, spent years basically taking on the role of an administrative assistant, a saleswoman, um, a business owner, like pretty, the, you know, the, I've been the product, um, which is kind of strange to be selling yourself as a product. That took a lot of getting used to. Um, I really would just say from, I can only speak from my personal experience and it's, it's really just been working hard and, and taking baby steps. And I don't really, I, I only um, work on projects um, with, with people that um, I wanna form relationships because I think they're good people or, or they work hard or they're talented. Um, I'm not a fan of like taking things on um, because someone has clout or, or because, or I, I don't wanna like step on anyone's um shoulders to get anywhere um so you know there's a lot of nights where you're just <laughs> you're you're up at three o'clock in the morning with your band playing in the back of a bar for two people wow. you know but then there's okay. some days where you're playing a festival and there's hundreds of people there watching you and it's amazing so um yeah I just, I just say hard work and and doing doing a little bit of everything Learn, learning, learning how to do a little bit of everything. That, that's a really good answer. It's a really detailed answer. Uh, one, one more question for you, Katrina, if it's all right. Um, as a professional jazz singer, it would be very interesting, uh, very unique 
for you um, to be able to describe what your impression is of Angelina Jordan. Is that a fair question to ask you? Um, I, I actually didn't know about, of her until I met you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. But, it, but I got on a, I got on a, a YouTube train after that and she's lovely, lovely <laughs> vocals. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the part, part of her problem is, well, part of every musician's problem is just ratcheting up your profile higher and higher and higher and, and getting out there and not just getting 100,000 people to know about you, but not even getting 100 million people, getting 1 billion people to know about you. And it's just, there's so many um, steps on the ladder, so many steps on the ladder. Yeah, I, that's really always been my uh, biggest challenge is just um, getting people to find me, getting people to find who I am. Um, it's really comes down to marketing and promotion. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of people know who I am in, in the areas that I perform, um, but it's it's a little hard harder getting more of a uh, uh, a global view on you. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's really about you know, pushing social media, which I don't think I'm very good at. I don't really like <laughs> pushing myself on social media. I know, I know. It's, I mean, I, I have the um, advantage of being retired where this is just a fun hobby for me. Um, I, 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 yeah. I, I lose money um, for, with this hobby. I, I pay out. I, I'm certainly not earning money, but it's fun. It, it's yeah, well, that's fun. good. Yeah, it's great fun, great fun. Um, Katrina, I have a lot of editing to do. Um, this has been an absolutely wonderful and great interview, and I will send you the fruits of this conversation incorporated into the video. And thank you ever so much. That sounds awesome. You're, you're so welcome. Thank you for, for inviting me to speak with you. It, it's great. And um, one more thing. I'd like to play um, a, a 10 or 15 second clip of um, one of your videos, uh, perhaps one that you wrote yourself. Uh, as part of um, the whole video. Which one would you like me to choose? Oh, that would be great. Um, so my most recent one that I posted um, is called Gaslight. Okay. So that, that's the one I'm trying to promote the most right now. You, you um, got it. You got it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Katie, Katrina, it's wonderful uh, speaking with you. Thank you ever so much. And um, thank you for realizing that this is really a fun project. And, and um, uh, yeah. Understanding that. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. absolutely. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Keep having fun with it. I will. Bye. 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 Try to be little, uh, try to deceive, build up your narrative and get the bit of me. Okay, gang. We will continue with Angelina Jordan. I'm out of here. I'll catch you later. Bye.